Well, I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. My talk is called Tarot and Energy. And as you may have noticed when I introduced my particular sort of like style or orientation to in Tarot, it's much more spiritual. And really when you think about it, a lot of people think of Tarot as, um, I don't know, answering questions or making predictions. But in my own work, and uh, especially in my, as I mentioned before, as I was going through graduate school for counseling and, and then working with the cards with myself and also with one of my friends, Don Becker, he's like a, a, a spirit brother there. Um, we kind of came up with the idea that really the cards themselves could be so much more dynamic and bring a lot more energy and depth to the reading. And that's when I started doing what turned out to be my tarot counseling style. And so right now, this is, I'm, I've been doing tarot for, uh, gosh, over 45, 48 years, something like that. And in my current evolution, I'm really embracing even more the whole idea of light and love. And that's why I'm so excited about the festival that's coming up in Montreal, September 20th and through, 20 this, through the 22nd, I believe. That's right. It's a three-day festival. Thank you. Thank you. And I do hope everybody signs up. It's like such a rare, wonderful, amazing, powerful, deep opportunity. And I love the fact that it's just called light and love. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. But when it comes right down to it, David, you know, light and love, one way of looking at them is that they're expressions of energy. You know, yes. and that energy, that energy of light, it actually enters our bodies. And that's when we experience love. You know, I used to have this concept that love is just in the air and it's everywhere. But one of my teachers, Dr. Sue Mortar, was, and she did the energy codes, is talks about how, no, actually everything is this light and everything is the energy. It's when it comes into our dense energy bodies as human beings that we actually experience it as love. And that's why I think it's so incredibly powerful to that's have- beautiful. Yeah, to really have this understanding of our energy bodies. And of course, how it relates to our work with Tarot. And I think the easiest way to start noticing that is like when we ourselves feel like we have more love, when we're more in touch with love, that is an energy that most of us feel more expanded, right? Mm -hmm. that what happens for you when you feel love, your heart expands, your body expands. You feel, you feel lighter as well. Right. You feel lighter. You don't feel so dense. <laughs> you don't feel so physical. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so when we feel less love, we're more contracted. And so there's something about understanding love and energy and how truly connected they are, just like light and love. And so again, I wanna look more deeply at how this energy and light and love is actually revealed through the tarot cards and other oracles. So first off, just looking at ourselves, this is an, a graphic I created. And uh, as you can see in the center, that's supposed to represent us as human beings with our chakra system, mm -hmm. as well as our energy bodies all around us. And you know, here we are in the age of quantum physics. And many of us are beginning to truly, truly understand, not just intellectually, but on a cellular energetic level, that we are energy. We're just pure energy. And our human bodies just happen to be a denser version of mm -hmm. that energy. And then the energy itself circulates, as you can see here, through our energy centers, especially our chakras, right? That's and right. And then it circles around our physical bodies, our, our various energy bodies. And this isn't really something new, you know. This is something the ancients knew, like at least 5,000 years ago or more. It, in fact, Greg Braden calls it spiritual technology. I love that term. <laughs> And then um, the other thing that I don't think so many people realize is that when we're in touch with our bodies, the best way to do that is through our sensations, what's also called the feeling tone body. And that feeling tone body receives billions of impulses of information every millisecond, whereas our rational mind only receives less than 10. Wow, it's just but, fascinating. Isn't it? So those of us who are in the intuitive arts, for the most part, we do not get that information from our brains. 
we do it by tuning into her our whole being and the field around us and how it penetrates and touches us and signals us in different ways. And even the tarot cards themselves are a visual signal. You know, it's the visual channel, but some people also hear things. So then it's the audio channel of sensation. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, many of us will have physical sensations. I'll talk a little bit about that. But right now I have a quote from Dr. Sue Mortar from her book, The Energy Codes. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience in a physical energetic world. And that to experience and live the fullness of our true nature, we must begin consciously living as beings of spirit, as energy beings in this physical aspect of life. And so there, what she's talking about is even the air that we breathe is energy coming from the cosmos and it's penetrating our lungs and our heart. And then this air can also be seen as spirit as it enters our body right there from the very, very first breath. And then of course, every breath since then. Mm -hmm. And then our lungs, another way to think of our lungs is that they hug our heart, bathing our heart with the love of the divine with every breath. And in essence, when this cosmic light enters our body, it is realized as love and love energy. You know, so when, when we have different avatars and teachers and our history as human beings teach us about love and light, they weren't just talking about it, they were embodying it and modeling it for us. And that's what we're here to do. And I find the tarot cards are a wonderful way to help introduce this to people so that they really too have a sample of it or they, it gets reinforced or they get reminded about it. It's just one breath away. So I have mm -hmm. a very interesting quote here from Greg Braden that I think is very apropos for those of us who work with tarot energy. I believe any process including Tarot, <laughs> that expands self-consciousness and allows us to observe and interact with our subconscious minds will open the gateway for change. With conscious awareness, we can actively transform our lives so they are filled with love, health, and prosperity. So again, you know, when you're there and you're holding the Tarot cards in your hand, you actually have the potential to access the wisdom of the universe depending on how open you are to this awareness. You know, each card actually vibrates a unique energy, much like the various frequencies that were shown there in our body. You know, and of course, some of them are gonna resonate with us while other ones are gonna be more dissident. And those are things we wanna pay attention to as well. Are we expanding, are we contracting? You know, so of course, when we examine this whole notion of oracle cards, and this is the way, you know, let's just say stereotypically the way they're used is people are searching for love. You know, they're looking for some completion of some type, usually from another being. So for instance, it could be a love interest. Maybe they want some kind of recognition from a family member. But, you know, most people tend to assume it's an outside job that Mm -hmm. you know, they, they're coming from it from this approach that says something's missing and it needs to be found. Isn't that why a lot of people come for tarot readings, David? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually presenting something quite a bit different here, you know, because if love is already in our being and the reminder of our connection with source is just one breath away, then why do we spend so much time trying to? fill a perceived void with outside reminders. Mm -hmm. It's a dis spiritual disconnection we have with our inner self that I, I find creates that void. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I knew you would understand this. You know, I think we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I know that most of us enjoy being blessed with loving energy and sharing that with others, you know, like we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. But what if that flow truly does come from within and is reflected outside rather than that old codependent notion that I need you in order to feel love? That just kind of turns things around a bit. Definitely. All right. So I'm going to invite everybody now to just pause and be with your body 
and if this image helps you do that, you know, just feel that stillness, that peace. It's only one breath away. You know, maybe if you're sitting, have your feet on the ground, your shoulders relaxed, some relaxing belly breaths. And I have something I want to share with you in this next slide. I just want you to notice what you notice about it. So have you ever been around someone who just glows love? And by the way, do you glow? I mean, it may not be a constant, but can you remember those times when you glow? And then when you are glowing, where is that energy actually coming from? Just meditate on that for a moment. Again, the question is, how can that be portrayed in a tarot card? And this is a tarot card. For those of you who might know the Voyager tarot, this is the Woman of Cups, which in another deck would be the Queen of Cups. But whatever sensations came up for you with that last slide, can you maybe get some connection with how that can work with just about any tarot card? And again, the things you want to notice is do you feel more expanded or do you maybe feel more contracted? Do you get a sense of joy from the inside or peace? Or is there something kind of disturbing or um, kind of irritating? <laughs> those are yeah. all wonderful, amazing things to notice because when you are noticing those sensations, it's actually the body wisdom communicating with you. And at that point, I feel an immediate connection with the all, with everything. Once you're at peace with your inner self, you're at peace with everything around you. No matter what chaos you might be around or surrounded by, nothing matters. And you are so peaceful. So nothing external can influence your internal or your judgment or your thoughts, your emotions. That's right. Because it's an inside job. Or you could be in a really peaceful place, or at least I'll say apparently peaceful. But you can sense some irritation inside your body with lets you know there's something in, let's just say, the quantum field that's not quite at peace. And it's also important to honor that. Yeah, so all feelings are welcome. All experiences are, are most welcome. We just don't want to get married to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, here's what I find kind of interesting. Because so, if you can actually sense these new experiences when viewing the cards, and if you know that this energy is actually within you, it's being mirrored or triggered by a piece of paper, or in this case, via electronic media, which is itself electrical energy, right? Mm -hmm. So either way you look at it, the energy, whether it be the, the colors on that piece of paper or the colors on your screen right now, it's energy reaching out, stimulating, connecting, reminding you in some way. All right. So now I loved what you were saying a moment ago, David, and what it reminds me of are really, really important. I'm calling it my short list of things that remind us that love is an inside job and that it can be reflected in the world. So for instance, you probably heard these things. <clears throat> Many tri spiritual traditions and religious traditions talk about things like non-judgment, mm -hmm. unconditional love, compassion. Also, you know, they talk about releasing attachments. You've probably heard that before. As of well. course. All right. Well, you know, that's also the wisdom of the Tarot. Like I said, I've studied the Tarot. I really studied it as a book of wisdom, especially those first uh, 20 some odd years as a solitary practitioner. And those are exactly the same lessons that show up in the Tarot. And I want to show you where you might recognize these as they communicate with us. So for instance, the idea of unconditional love for me, that comes up around the Empress, which is Major Arcana number three. And this particular image is from the Comparative Tarot, which was a collaborative deck. And this particular one was from Alexandra Gannetti. And so here we're seeing something that I think is a very, very amazing, beautiful, deep, magical formula. 
you know, unconditional love is not just something we want to feel towards nature and animals and generally towards other people. It's something we really want to experience for ourselves. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. But it's also a state of consciousness, right? We have to embody that energy. And embody is the key word. Embody the energy because it's already there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need these reminders. And so here's the secret shortcut. You see that baby in the image? I don't know about you, and I'm not going to say all people feel this way, but most people, when you gaze on that brand new little baby and its innocence and its openness, do you also feel love and innocence and openness? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, what if you are that little baby now? Can you feel the same way about yourself? Can you love yourself so unconditionally and see that preciousness, that you are a precious being? Pure love and pure acceptance. That's the energy of unconditional love and the universe. It's a beautiful, beautiful energy. Yeah. So now let's look at things like attachments. I think of the devil. And here we have the Albano weight deck, which is, by the way, the card is from my original deck. It's not the U.S. game systems. And when we release attachments, I mean, I know a lot of people know this who've studied this card, but for those of you that may not know this, we have this female form and this male form in this card, and they have these chains around their necks. And, you know, Arthur Edward Waite, when he designed this deck, he put a lot of spiritual technology into it, <laughs> a lot of spiritual wisdom and depth. And so attachment, he's reminding us, is in our heads. In other words, those chains are so loose, they could take them off at any moment and be the full-bodied selves they are really meant to be. These are the two, this is you know, if you want to think in terms of the Old Testament or biblical ideas and stories, this is Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. But now that they've been out in the world and they've developed this ego and the ego, which is also called the protective personality by my, my teacher, Dr. Sue, you know, the protective personality and the ego has developed to help us survive. You know, life can be scary, it can be difficult, it can be challenging. And the ego developed in order to help protect us. So that when an experience came around that was hurtful, harmful, painful, then the ego says, I don't want to repeat that again. But the problem is, is then we hold on to these stories and these beliefs so that we cut ourselves off from truly being alive and experiencing life in a more fluid in this now moment. So mm -hmm. that is where our attachments come from. They're mental ego attachments to the old stories and the old beliefs. And we're really trying to protect ourselves from harm. But actually what we're really doing is cutting ourselves off from experience life and energy and love. Mm -hmm. And it's, I also see the separation of the masculine and feminine spiritual energies. Because we all have within both of these spiritual energies, we are both masculine and feminine. But being attached or, or, or uh, dependent on any type of uh, uh, attachment, we're, we're actually acknowledging the, the misbelief that there are two separate energies, masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the break and separation occurs and, and keeps growing after our attachment and seeing something that it's as if after we're living in, in an illusion, Resin, we really need to step back and you know find ourselves within and find both the uh, both the feminine and masculine energies within us that completes who we are right. on the internal aspect, which then allows us to be able to release any attachment. Exactly, and that's part of it right there is owning our two halves, masculine and feminine. It's also the yin and the yang, the active mm -hmm. and the passive. You know, and that's what I love about Taoism because uh, any of you who've seen the circle with the yin and the yang, the black, the white inside, they remind us is that there is contrast in life, but we're not split. It's a total. We need to dance together. We need to move together. 
So yeah, that's a beautiful, I mean, that's part of reclaiming our shadow even, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of course in this card, it talks about shadow too, but it's a whole nother lesson. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So compassion, I think of the star when I think of compassion. And I could say a great deal about compassion. It could be a whole lesson on its own. But how's the star like compassion? To me, the star is when you see the eye of God. The star is when you've had that altered state experience, that near-death experience, and you truly did leave your body identity and you were mingling with the stars or God or goddess or universe or the quantum field, whatever you want to call it. And so then to come back to this earthly existence with that awareness and that understanding, you know, I, I even look at this particular card here, and this is from the Infinite Visions Tarot from Gloria Jean. I, I, this is an amazing deck, I love it. And we even have this little motif here. It's a little bit like the magician with the as above, so below. Mm -hmm. But what it's reminding us is that spirit and breath that we take it, every breath, that's the as above and so below. At any moment, we can open up our hearts and have compassion, not only for our earthly existence, but for our part in the greater quantum field and the greater part of life that each one of us is a precious and beautiful aspect of that holographic total totality and again having compassion for each and every aspect even the most difficult experiences keeps that heart open and then finally judgment the judgment card right mm -hmm. so i think of the judgment card as i always have not about judgment you know, judgment day, yes, of course, it's implied there, but transcending judgments. And so in this particular cosmic egg image from Guido Gillibel and Carol Hertzer, what we're looking at is how do we reach and embrace higher consciousness? Mm -hmm. And again, we do it by no longer identifying as, as you were just talking a little while ago about that masculine and feminine as these individual characters. And we really truly believe and know that we are all part of that totality and that our individual energies needed to be channeled onto this earth because we were, we we're participating and we were being a really powerful aspect of the energy of this particular adventure. But ultimately we come back home to our oneness and our unity. Mm -hmm. It's our awakening as I see it. Yeah, Gabriel blowing the horn, bringing his mm -hmm. back. But you know, it's really about unification and not needing that kind of contrast anymore. Not needing to be, um, not to, not needing to see the separateness. So now, if we take this tran transcending of judgment into day to day life, how can that be practiced now? In this now moment, how can be practiced with going outside and interacting people with people? Or here's another thing, you know, a lot of people on Facebook, for instance, and maybe some other mediums, you know, there's a lot of division, polarity, politics, etc., and people feel very divided. You know, they're on different sides of certain philosophical uh, fences. But what if we can also transcend judgment in that moment, which means, yes, I can have an opinion, but my heart stays open to exactly. you. I may not agree with your point of view, but I can still love and connect with you. So mm -hmm. that's I, amazing. Again, we're not separated. So removing that sort of devil perception that we are two separated, let's say beings, we're actually the same from the same source. So exactly, once we sort of accept we have different opinions we still have both share that same loving energy that same light right you're an aspect of me in a different timeline that i am not necessarily experiencing in my timeline <laughs> mm -hmm. yes <laughs> all right getting two out there maybe <laughs> So when we kind of go back to this idea of the energy being in the cards, I just wanted to kind of contrast these two cards of judgment, because as you can see, they, ha they really, even though they have the same essential message in the background, do they feel differently to you? Do you what kind of energy are you as an observer right now noticing about yourself as you view each of these cards? 
Does one maybe connect with you more clearly, not from your head again, but from your full body? So that's a, that would be a fun experiment to do if you've got some cards at home and you want to pull them out and do a side by side. Go, wow, which one really has the feeling of this lesson about non judgment for me, for instance? All right. So now this is the point where earlier I said, separate out your major arcana cards in your particular deck. It doesn't really matter what deck you're working with. You can even also work with an Oracle deck if you like, but this part of the lesson I ever so briefly, and David, you can let me know how much time I have to do this, but I actually wanted to go briefly through each one of the 21 cards in the major arcana and just share, a, this is like a work in progress for me, but I'm trying to come up with energy language ways of describing the essence of what I see in each one of these cards. So what do you think, David? Should yeah, I, I think, yeah, we have the, definitely have the time. Okay. All right. So here we go. <laughs> so let's start with the fool. And by the way, as you can see, this is my original Advent Albano Waite, or if you want to say Waite Smith deck. And this came out wow, something around 1968. And one of my students, bless his heart, gifted it to me because he had had it. It was his original deck. So I'm ever, ever so thankful to him for that. So let's start with the fool. So if we look at the fool from this energy model point of view, it's all about just being in the present, in this now moment, because that is the only reality, this moment, and just keeping it simple and, and not struggling. That, that, those are some really key energies for me around the fool. And then the magician is about focusing the energy in a very concentrated way, such as when we're chanting a mantra or when you're directing your power in a very purposeful way. So anybody who does meditation knows you need the magicians to stay focused, whether you're focusing on a flame or you're, you're, you're doing gazing at a, some kind of image, you know, or if it's inner gazing. And then the high priestess, she reminds us to listen with our whole being, our whole body, and then let everything else fall away. And she opens us up to being completely in whatever new awareness appears. And then the empress, as we mentioned before, definitely about practicing unconditional love. Loving everyone and everything as if it's a precious baby, a precious spirit, and especially <laughs> including oneself. And also knowing that you deserve complete attention and love. And whenever you give someone attention like I'm doing and David doing right now, or that you are by watching this, we're sharing love by sharing our attention and our time. Now the emperor, the emperor is very much about recognizing old outdated walls and boundaries and then building our new energy body and creating new circuitry. Very, very powerful. And then the Hierophant is where we re-educate the self. And I say self with a capital S and being able to truly open and be a channel for higher consciousness. Now the lovers, I believe in this energy model, they're about embracing the self and others, but from that love energy without the drama. In other words, that unconditional love, but now exchanging and being around others, even if they're really different from you, but maintaining this base of love, not from a philosophical or some kind of program point of view, but truly experiencing the energy from the inside out. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I've been practicing that for a long time and it has got me through situations like people try coming after me with a knife or a gun or, you know, really threatening situations. And every time I was able to turn on the love or I'll say in one situation, I was able to run and scream bloody murder, but, <laughs> <laughs> but still, I didn't hate the people. Mm -hmm. I just knew it, I loved myself to take care of myself. <laughs> so there's something about keeping this baseline of love that I think the lovers is talking about. In the chariot, it's really very much about having the courage to go into all of this unknown, you know, with your whole body and soul. 
Now I tend to add the balance justice and the strength cards together, so the eight and the 11, because to me, they're both about balance. They're just one of them's uh, more of a mental balance, the other one's more of an emotional balance. So if I'm speaking to the balance or justice card, you know, that's very much about relaxing the mind so that the mind can follow the heart's wisdom. And then the strength itself is the heart. It's the one with the emotional balance. It's the one that taps into one's authenticity and really has the courage to love without fear. Because honestly, fear and love cannot exist in the same place at the same time, because that's crazy making. Mm -hmm. As a psychotherapist, I know that's at the root of every mental disease. Yes. So the strength is an amazing, powerful card in that area. And then a hermit, you know, he's just being himself. He knows all along. It's all about uh, going within. (laughs) That's right. He's had this energy thing down for a long time. All right. (laughs) So the wheel of fortune, you know, I, I, uh, I truly believe that the wheel of fortune is the one that reminds us that we have these unconscious patterns that keep repeating and they keep us from love such as obsessions and addictions you know it's Mm -hmm. like it goes around and around and we see ourselves on the outside of the wheel and we get run over by life because we feel like a victim and we feel like we don't have any personal control or responsibility and it's very much about bringing your awareness to the hub of the wheel of course this is a Taoist ideal as well and to be able to go with the ups and downs but to keep that center and then the hanged man, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to have to surrender. And it means surrendering to the struggle or surrendering from struggle. You know, it just really is about just letting it go and to be in each now moment experience, even if it is painful. You mm-hmm. see? Even if it's painful, that's where you are in that moment. And not to... Uh, dissociate from it not to run away from it and i'm talking about adults here and i don't mean to trigger anybody when i say this but when we work with our breath and we know spirit is in our breath and love is the expression of that within us again bringing if we bring all these elements together loving oneself and breathing and moving and creating new circuitry even those painful moments can be processed extremely quickly All right. So death is about releasing the ego. Remember, I was talking earlier about that protective personality, Mm -hmm. right? This is where, you no, it's not about your body dying. It's number 13. It's in the middle of the major arcana, right? (laughs) (laughs) It's all about the practice. That's right. It's like I think of shedding skin. I think of shedding hairs. You know, I brush my hair and there's hair in my brush. The things are dying and shedding so that new things can be reborn, but that the dying part is incredible, the important part about mm-hmm. just completely surrendering, not, yeah, completely surrendering. All right, you know that part. So temperance, you know, temperance is when we're beginning to realize that we are these physically dense energy uh, beings, and we're also cosmic energy. And temperance is the one that helps us find a balance between the two. And then the devil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, releasing those attachments. But Mm -hmm. you know what? It's also about releasing blame. You know, the moment we blame, even if we're blaming Mercury retrograde, you know, we're blaming all these outside elements as if, again, this is the Wheel of Fortune speaking, as if we have no uh, either responsibility or no control. You know, but the more the ego tries to control things, the less in sync we are, the less we're in the flow of life. And the more we're in the flow of life, the less these things bother us, the more we can flow with what our deeper purpose is. And then we're truly more alive and we've taken the chains off of our neck. So we're no longer held back by devilish attachments. (laughs) All right, so now the tower, you know, the tower, of course, is all about transforming, but now we're transforming our physical awareness to pure universal energy. Remember, this is the energy story. And then the star, again, is that deep compassion for ourselves and all, but it's also about 
grounding that unity consciousness because we're still on the earth. But remember, we're like this conduit. And this is where the Harfant reminds us, we're the conduit between that celestial cosmic awareness and what it is to be a dense human being walking upon the surface of the earth. And so one last piece of clarification in this journey and by the way, this is sort of like a different version of my sacred journey of the soul through the major arcana, which I've been teaching since 1996, I think. And uh, so uh, as I continue to grow and evolve, it continues to grow and evolve. And it's actually the book I'm working on right now. Oh. So I'm adding a whole another layer to Amazing. it. Amazing. Yes. So the moon is our old memories and traumas. And it's not just our, in this lifetime, it's our cellular memories, you know, our mm -hmm. epigenetics. It's our ancestors and what they went through. And it's also the part of us that's been both sides of the trauma. In other words, sometimes we're the trauma uh, stimulator <laughs> and sometimes we're the trauma receiver mm -hmm. you know? so the moon is the one that helps us dissolve that and a lot of the dissolving comes through forgiveness forgiveness it's very very important there ah it's forgiveness from the heart and then the sun is wow we finally did it and we knew we know so clearly now that we are light beings upon the earth and we are fully fully connecting and loving our bodies and, and thus we're casting no shadows we no longer carry those old traumas we no longer carry fear we are truly energy bodies on this earth brings us to the judgment when then we've truly transcended that duality and of course our heart is as light as a feather and finally the world being in tuned with a much bigger picture. You see, we really are seeing ourselves as these universal beings or seeing our part in the beautiful web of life, the beautiful tapestry of life and how important our particular thread is and to be so honest and so courageous and so authentic and knowing that we are connected and we are the other. And there's no longer that division. We don't need it. We are truly unified and to find some ease with that okay fantastic That's the journey of the uh, it's an amazing journey yes all right so now i have this exercise for you to do and what you might want to do is um you can if you're watching this recording you may want to pause pull out your handout um but for now i want to just kind of share some ideas with you to help enhance this exercise for you and again i'm suggesting that you work with the major arcana cards but you can work with the total deck or if you're working with an oracle deck you know any deck this will apply to it's just that since i just went through the major cards i thought it might be more potent for you all right okay so um let's see here you know when I, again, as I mentioned way at the beginning, a lot of people, when they approach Tarot, or let's just say that the, the stereotype is that it's all about doing predictions. And in order to do these predictive readings, we've got to memorize what the cards mean. And I'm all for learning the cards and I'm all for learning the beautiful, deep wisdom that's been layered into the cards over these many, many hundreds of years. Um, but I also know that in order to get to a deeper now moment experience, what we truly want to tap into is the card's essence or its energy, all right? And a lot of this influence for me came from the work of Swiss analyst Carl Jung, I'm sure most of you've heard of him, mm -hmm. as well as my teacher, who, Arnie Mendel, who actually studied at the Jung Institute, among other things. He's also an MI, uh, let me see, what do you, MI, what is it, MIA, wait, wait, what was it? I'm going blank. So he's a physicist. Is it MIA, Massachusetts Institute of MIT? There we go. MIT, the MIT. Yay. So he was at MIT. He's a physicist. And it was his understanding of the connection between physics and Jungian psychology that actually got him into that. Uh, but anyway, so he talks about dreaming, dreaming of the cards. He doesn't talk about the cards, but I do. He talks about dreaming in general. And how when we're dreaming, that's purely subjective. And this dreaming is not just something that happens when we're asleep. It's every day moment. It's like your waking dream as well as your dreaming dream. And that's what really clued me into the dreaming and the cards. You know, and so when we're working with the cards in this way, it really can illuminate not only our personal 
journey, but also the collective psyche, right? So that's the same thing we're tapping into with this energy. It's a direct channel and it helps us release the subconscious mind, like Greg Braden was talking about. And so rather than, you know, suppressing this energy with cognitive labels, you know, like, ooh, the emperor's bad, it's an authority figure and we don't like authority figures, we're breaking out of those labels, right? And we're really truly allowing those old value judgments as good and bad to be, you know, left aside, you know. So what mm -hmm. we really want to tap into is the universal energy that's there at any moment. And when you're able to do that, then it allows you to really open up your imagination and allow the cards to speak to you much more clearly and purely. So that's what I'm going to invite you to do right now. And just give yourself a moment to, uh, and I'm going to take you through this exercise and explain it a little bit for you. So the first thing you're going to do is, you know, you're probably shuffling your cards. That's what most people like to do with their cards. You may have some other style of working with your cards. And as you're doing that shuffling again, allow yourself to clear your mind and have some very easy breaths. And to me, an easy breath is not, ooh, I'm gonna fill my lungs as, as deeply as I can. It's about allowing that nice, slow, gentle breath to go all the way down to your belly. And then when you exhale, exhaling from the belly, just letting it all hang out and be relaxed. And believe it or not, that makes a beautiful connection between your brain and the actual intelligence, the mind of your heart. And there's a whole thing about heart math that actually has a scientific explanation for how that's so powerful. And then we're not looking for a particular anything. We're just open to whatever shows up in the cards. We don't have an agenda. And then in your unique style now, after you shuffled your cards, I'm gonna have you select one card, but place it face down. Don't quite look at it yet. And again, taking one to three gentle breaths. As you turn the card over, notice what you notice. In other words, you're in this moment, your mind is relaxed, and just notice exactly where your focus goes. Or actually your focus, I'm gonna ask you to bring that focus, not so much on the card, but on your inner body. You know, because we're using fool's awareness as we gaze at the card, which means we're seeing it with fresh, New eyes, no interpretation, no judgment, no analyzing, <laughs> no assumption, no thoughts at all. You just want to sense the card. And again, using those sensations, you know, sensations, of course, can be visual, can also be audio, but sometimes it's movement. Like, for instance, do you ever have times when your hair stand up? Like I do on my arm, you know, I get chills sometimes when I look at a card or maybe there's some warmth going on or some coolness. Again, noticing expansion and contraction or heaviness and lightness, like you were talking about, David, mm -hmm. or, or maybe sharpness or dullness. I notice sometimes I feel a sharp needle pressing someplace. But what you wanna do is really pinpoint those areas or notice if it's a very generalized sensation and not try to label it, not try to analyze it again, just notice it. And this is what my, my teacher, Dr. Sue Mortar calls, take it to the body. She says, the body is wiser than our, or this is my interpretation of what she's saying anyway, the body is wiser than our ego mind. Again, just reminding ourselves that if we can open ourselves to a whole body experience, we're gonna get millions more pieces of information than if we use our mind. And I mean your brain, <laughs> our heart also has a mind. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is basically the information that I wanted to share with you. This isn't about interpreting the card, this is about experiencing the card. And just allow it to be experienced when your reading's over, again, not interpreting it, just allow yourself to experience it. Walk through your day, notice if that experience shows back up again. Maybe talk to people. Notice if that experience shows up again just spontaneously. We're not looking for it. We're just observing. So you can think of it like a walking meditation. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to 
leave you with that. <laughs> and, and I want to thank it's very, it's very powerful. It's very powerful, beautiful uh, <clears throat> presentation. I loved it. Yeah, it's like a little bit like a meditation, mm -hmm. but it's really also teaching us to tap into the energy of the cards because it's not that the card holds all the energy. We're, we're the energy. The card, of course, is paper, but it's also has an energy of its own. It's just that the energy is not, does that make sense? It's like you are your own entity. You have your own energy, but we're all connected. So we're connected mm -hmm. to the because sometimes we're, we're just not conscious of it. Yes. The card allows us to become conscious of it, but it's within. Thank you. I love the way you just said that. Yes. All right. So this is a fabulous, oh my gosh, September, October. I'm like on my wow. road tour. Fabulous. And the first and most wonderful thing, of course, is going to my being at the Light and Love Tarot Reading festival or international festival in montreal please i want to see you there please come join us and what's really special and david i'm so thankful you know i've been doing spiritual work with true as you can tell pretty much all along but it's not always something i can share with people and i love your venue because it gives me that opportunity to just come out of that spiritual true closet mm -hmm. That's <laughs> and, right. yeah. and so this awakening universal purpose it's a ritual and includes many different layers, not only the tarot cards or oracle cards, but there's also visuals, there's sound, there's mudras, there's meditation, and there's also some information for the mind. We're going through these 10 dimensions of the universe and how each dimension has some message for us in terms of our purpose and our journey in life. And it's, a, it's an amazing experience. I've usually just done it one-on-one -on -one, but now i'm starting to do it in larger groups so this is profound work for some people i've gotten amazing feedback from it so i i think there's just a few spots left so we'd love to have you there and that's going to be on saturday night and it is an additional fee and on top of your wonderful discount for the general i, I love that. in fact the discount the 20 percent probably would cover my fee for <laughs> anyway <laughs> you can do both that's and, right <laughs> and then, you know, I've been doing tarot retreats. This will be my 23rd year. And I, I mostly do them here in Oregon. They're incredibly popular and really, really deep experiential times to be with the tarot. And I, I've done them in Texas a couple of times. And since I'm going to be out on the East Coast, I've got one in New York. And so if you want more information about that, please reach out to me. I'd love to tell you about it. And then uh, last year when I was at your wonderful event, I stayed an extra week because I just wanted to experience Eastern Canada because I really hadn't been there before. And I got in touch with my Toronto friends and they invited me to come back. And so I'm just so honored to be presenting at the Toronto Turo Circle and also at the Witch Fest North, which is an amazing month long event in Toronto. So, wow, amazing. so many cool things going on. And then of course I mentioned earlier, my professional Turo consulting certificate course, which starts September the 15th and it goes for two months. And those are people for, you know, I wouldn't say beginner beginners. I have a beginning uh, series on global spiritual studies for that. But this is for people who are ready to work with the public or go much more deeply in their own skills and practice. And I definitely, it's very comprehensive. And you get supervision and we have a secret Facebook group. So you have buddies and you get to practice. And it's a really kind of, to me, it's the next best thing to being there in person with you. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you very much for this powerful presentation, Katrina. I'm sure the audience would really appreciate uh, watching this and learning from your uh, your wisdom. Well, thank you so much. It's what I, you know, what, what you were talking about in the beginning. It's like service, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's when we each align with what our purpose is and we get clarity about that, it gives us absolute permission to take risk like you did putting together this event. You know, it takes you know, we're out there and we know it's a risky world. I, it's, you know, every now and then we, we get the old world uh, kickback about people's fears and they understand mm -hmm. we're coming from a place of love, you know, but this is the other thing. The more we come from love, the less those fearful things start showing up in our environment, or if they do, it's an amazing opportunity to practice it. So, yeah. yes. David, yes. thank you so much for this opportunity. And, 
you and Tiffany, I mean, just doing this whole telesummit, what a gift. I mean, I've, I've actually been on almost every one of the calls. I get up eight in the morning <laughs> Pacific time. And these are the same people who are presenting at your event. So I don't know if people understand what a powerful event is and all the beautiful people that you attract there. So it's not only a networking opportunity, but you've got some profound teachers. Of course, you've got Mary Greer mm -hmm. and Rachel Pollock. And I just so much enjoyed being with them last year. So I'm, it's like a, a homecoming. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just can't emphasize <laughs> enough also, how important it is. I mean, I've been planning this second year since, uh, I mean, it's almost a year now and it's, you know, I can't wait. You know, also very excited for the events, you know, get to see uh, everyone again and just, you know, see the audience come in and sharing this, you know, the wisdom and the knowledge and learning and it's just a fabulous, you know, place to be. It's a love fest. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. Bless you so much. Thank you for all of your work. And um, just I hope to see everybody there. Yay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.